All right, so today I'm actually going to talk about a program called PhotoP, and I'm just going to refresh this real quick so you can see what this front screen looks like, which is a Photoshop based um, program that you can get online, photop.com, and you can open a myriad of files um, and edit them inside of the program. And I specifically today want to talk about mock ups. Um, before I discovered smart mockups, what I was doing, and you can see this as old branding, so I don't do this anymore, old logo, old branding, old colors, is I used to take t-shirt mockups that were in JPEG, high quality JPEG format, and I would overlay them on my uh, ratio size for whatever site I was posting on, and then I would take... Uh, a design basically and I would design it I'd copy it I would paste it and then basically put it where I want it to be on the shirt and save this as a file to post on whatever website um, I was posting on it wasn't very time-consuming but I didn't really like the digitized feel to it so I was looking to see if there was anything else out there um, I've mentioned photo P a few times to people um, in Alicia's group, uh, Etsy Passive Income, and also in my group. Um, and I'll be talking about PhotoP and some blog posts moving forward as far as what you can do with it. Um, I gen generally just use this for mock-ups and creating patterns, which I will cover in another tutorial. But for now, we're just going to talk about mock-ups. And I just wanted to go over and show you guys where I get a lot of mine. I do use design bundles to purchase a lot of my mock-ups in Freeman Studios, one of my personal favorites. He has a ton, 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 ton of mock-ups, and these are all smart mock-ups. Um, they look a little high-priced, but the thing is, is each one comes with several different templates. Um, I actually just use this pregnancy template for uh, some of my maternity shirts that had some Really good stuff. These kids t-shirt mock-ups I actually use for some of my twin uh, bundles and I have just recently purchased and they have like family mock-ups and you know theme related mock-ups, uh, different types of clothing and you know you really can get a lot of bang for your buck with these and they are cool. Um, it's a really cool way to showcase your product. Today I'm actually going to go ahead and use the Halloween mock-up. These ones were actually really, really cute. Um, <clears throat> and instead of them providing, you know, this photo as a flat layer JPEG, you actually get these files in a PSD format, okay? Which means you can take any of these and you drop your image in and it shows up like it's realistically on the shirt, which is really neat. So it kind of contours with the curves and the wrinkles and the body shape and I just think it's, you know, a really cool way to showcase your product. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the mock-up. I'm going to go ahead and just use the, um, I label all these. The one decline I will say on the files is that he labels them however many they are, starting with one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, etc. So I usually go in and open up each one and, you know, kind of say what they are. And you could see my spelling errors, but, I mean, it's not for show so as long as I understand what it means that's all that matters so we're just going to use this guy right here okay and just to kind of go through you can see how he's organized the layers into his shadow layer his light layer um, here is the place your logo layer and this is actually the one that we're going to be manipulating with the smart object and a smart object is denoted by this little rectangle right here okay uh, you can also change your t-shirt color. I don't mess around with this too much, but if you do want to do something like that, you just um, double click and you can go to color overlay. You can change that color. Okay. Um, all you do is click here. Let's say we want black. Hit click OK. And then you just click the eyeball here to make that visible and our shirt is black. And you can mess around with that a little bit. You can change the opacity of that so that it's more of a gray color. Um, you can change the color overlay so it's set different blending modes and sometimes I'll use the dissolve mode on certain colors to show like this grainy look almost like a heather look um, depending on what color you're using but 
I'm going to go ahead and turn that off because I don't need it. I just generally use a white background. If you remove the t-shirt layer, it's actually going to take the t-shirt away itself. So I don't know if you notice that slight change there. Here it is off. Here it is on. Off. On. Okay. And then the background is not detachable. So that's one thing about this one that is, you know, sometimes for people that's hit or miss, they don't want the background. They just want the white with the body. Um, that's not the case with this one, but there's a lot of different mock-ups out there that you can use. So before we get into the smart mock-ups, one thing that I always do when I go through and do this now is um, I always make sure that I have my watermark included and I just take a base, very basic design. You want to go up to image and change that image size. So right now it's you know pretty big. And sometimes you have to play around with this to figure out what size that it is going to fit appropriately on your um, canvas depending on how big it is. You can check to see what your canvas size is just by going to image and canvas size and it'll show you that this is 4000 by uh, 2667 pixels. You can change that to inches. It's about, you know, 13 by 8 or 13 by 9. Although it's a one and a half to one ratio. Okay. So 4,000 pixels, you figure in half, that's 2,000 and half again, that's 1,000. So I just, I'm going to go ahead and, and size this to 1,000. Okay. You're going to go over to your layer, your background layer, right click on that and click duplicate into. And it's going to pop up with this pop up here. And you're just going to want to click on the, uh, file you're manipulating and click OK. What that's going to do is it's going to transfer this and see this is a PNG so that it's a transparent background into this file, right? So th there it is, okay? And then you just want to place that wherever. I'm going to go ahead and throw it in this bottom corner. You can see it's right here. Turn it off, turn it on. I always double click on this for the layer style and I change my opacity down to like I don't know, somewhere usually in the 40s. It's, I'm not ever like, oh, it has to be this number or whatever. I just kind of drag it until it looks good. Click OK. So it's subtle, but that way if somebody shares your product or um, shares your mock-up, pins your mock-up, you know, it goes somewhere, you have your branding located on the picture itself, okay? Um, so that's the first thing I start with is I always, always place my logo because generally when I'm doing these, I'm doing these in batch. So what that means is I take, you know, anywhere between five to 10 designs that I've done because I batch design and then I'll create, you know, five to 10 mockups in a row. So I'm going to go ahead and open up two Halloween files and I am going to open up. Let's see. I'm going to open up Official Candy Inspector. And I'm going to go ahead and open up Boo Felicia because I've been laughing about that one all day. And again, you're going to want to do the same thing. You're going to want to go to the image size and you're going to want to resize it. Okay. Now, usually I'll start off with about 600 pixels because I do make my files very large. I keep that DPI at 300. So you can see it's going to shrink that way down, but don't be concerned about that. Okay. It's not, um, it's not a huge deal. I'm going to start at 600 and see how that goes. Okay. And to get your smart object opened up, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to double click on your rectangle. Okay. And that's going to open up another File. You can see here they already pre-populated this um, particular mock-up and you can see that it's already on the little boy's shirt. You can turn this on or off. Okay, I like to leave it on because it kind of gives me a point of reference. One thing I like about these is they do save the t-shirt contour in here. So if you look at this, you can actually see where his shirt, you see how that is? And it shows you where the lines are too on his little tie there. And you can see how that's going to fall out. So you really don't need this on at all, but I like to use it as a placement reference. You just want to make sure you turn these layers off when you save your smart object or else they're going to show up. I'll show you what that looks like. 
If you go to File, Save Smart Object, or hit Control S, you'll see Smart Object updated. Now, because I saved this with the T-shirt contour, guess what? It's going to show up now. So if you click back on your regular file, you can see those T-shirt contour lines, right? So I'm just going to go back, and I'm going to actually remove both. We'll save it blank, okay? I just hit Control S there, Smart Object Updated, and it's blank, okay? So we're going to start, I'm going to bring those back, and you're going to do the same thing that you did with your watermark icon if you went through that step, is you're going to size your photo appropriately. Again, we did 600 by 600. And you, like I said, you'll find the sweet spot eventually, depending on how you design. I always design all mine 12 by 12 or um, in 300 DPI, which shakes out to be 3600 by 3600 pixel, pixels at uh, 300 DPI. So again, you're just going to want to right click, click duplicate into, and you're going to want to click on that PSD file. Okay. Oops, I'm sorry. I lied to you. <laughs> um, Golly, uh, not into the, not into there. Let me delete that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably rewind this because of that. You're gonna want to go into there, right click, duplicate into, and you're gonna want to duplicate it into your smart object, which is this rectangle 111.psd. Okay, so you're gonna see that pop up, and and you can see that this is actually pretty small compared to the file that they had in there. So I'm actually going to go back, I'm going to, I'm going to pause it, I'm going to resize until I get a good size and I'll go back. So I actually got that on the first jump. Instead of 600, I went to um, 800 and that was good. So I'm actually going to turn off the contour and I'm going to turn off the back. And, and if you want, you can delete that now because you'll have a point of reference with your new file. And you're just going to click Control S. Or you can go File, Save Smart Object, which we already did. It'll tell you Smart Object Updated. And you go back and you click, and there it is. It's a little low for my taste, so I'm going to want to bring it up in the rectangle a little bit. Let's see that there. And it has this line here. That's your reference line. I'll show you the middle. Okay. Hit Save. And that's a little bit better. I'm going to smidge it up just a little bit. This might be a little bit too high. Mm. Yep. And you kind of just get to the point where, there you go, that's perfect, where you get it where you want it, okay? So we have it where we want it. At this point, you don't need to do anything else. You just need to get the file, right, in the format you want. So you just go to File, Export As, and you have all these different options, okay? Obviously, I'm just going to go into a JPEG, okay? Now, I always put my quality to 100%. I don't want a file this big, so I actually half it. Um, so again, that's a personal preference. They'll do the ratio for you depending on what it is. Now you can drag around and see what this looks like. Now remember what I told you before. You actually can see the contours of the shirt. And if you see if I can get into it at a bigger size. So you can really see what it looks like. If you look closely, you can actually almost see the material of the shirt when you get really, really big. When this is the 3 to 2 ratio when you get that big. But again, I'm going to half it down to 2,000. And I'm going to click Save. And it's going to export into my downloads. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is you can double click the uh, panel and type in whatever you want your file name to be and then when you export it it'll save it as um, that file so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and you'll see that right there so I'm gonna go ahead and do that again real quick uh, for this file um, like I said 800 was the sweet spot for me you're gonna wanna right click it once you get it to the size you want duplicate into Rectangle 111, which is your smart object. And again, you open that smart object by double clicking. Okay. You see our design is right there. I'm going to center it 
And since I have my pointer reference from before, I'm just going to go ahead and drop that there. I'm going to go ahead and delete the background. Control S to save. And see what that looks like? <laughs> really cute, right? I can go ahead and um, save this file. So I will go ahead and do that. I'm going to hit File, Export As. JPEG, and you see these have to stay the same, so not to change them. Quality is 100%. I'm just going to click save, and that's going to bring that out. Now, I'm going to go ahead and open this up so you can see what it looks like. And there you go. There you have it. It's a little bit more realistic than the other flat mock ups that I showed you. So, I hope that you guys got some good information out of this and a different way to use mock ups. Um, you can also do this for digital paper. I have mentioned uh, the digital paper mockups before. I think that I posted um, a link to that. I don't personally have um, any digital paper mockups right now because I don't um, I don't have the need to to do that. I know that. Um, my featured designer, Tamara, has some <clears throat> digital paper mock-ups in her shop. And they're really cool to use. They are smart mock-ups, so it's the same thing. You see how these 10 panels are all separated. You just would double-click on that layer. It will open up. You'd paste your pattern, and then it will show up like her other... Um, papers and patterns do and you can see how that looks here in her 12 panels um, which is really cool so you can actually show how how they look um, if you need suggestions feel free to comment and I can help you out um, don't forget to check my blog out um, click on the subscription button if you are getting something out of this feel free to add a comment below and um, I hope that again you guys got something out of this and that I've helped you along your way. I hope everybody has a great night and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.